Well, good morning, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. So first and foremost, my apologies that it's now Saturday and I'm just now doing this video. <clears throat> I have had, as you all know, some continued oral surgery and some issues, and so had some doctor's appointments yesterday and just Big Fat didn't make the video. <laughs> so as promised, we are going to continue on with our Bye Bye Winter Skin series. So today I'm going to bring you a recipe that I actually developed from another person's recipe. So this is my recipe. I'm willing to share it. What I will say is as always with a disclaimer, you need to do your own research. You should run this recipe through your soap calculator that you prefer to use. You need to observe all safety precautions whenever you're working with lye and raw soap. So, got that part out of the way, right? So, some of you have asked, wow, you know, your skin looks great, what do you use? Well, first of all, let me tell you a little secret. I use a ring light. So, a ring light sits above the device you're using to record, and it has a tendency to wash out your wrinkles love my ring light. So um, while sometimes in videos my skin looks impeccable, I um, definitely have wrinkles and mature skin. So this soap, I altered the recipe to be more appropriate for mature skin. Looking at my demographic, um, many of you are, and not that you're mature at 45, 45 and older. So I think this is a great cleansing soap to use for more mature skin. So why would I make just a facial soap? Why not go to the store and just buy preparations? You know, go to the skincare aisle, even at Walmart. It's like, wow, there are so many options. I actually chose to do my own research and to develop using a basic recipe an altered recipe, if you will, that I thought would bring the maximum benefit to my skin type. So there are some advantages to the essential oils that I'm using, to the charcoal that I'll be using, to the combinations of oils that I'll be using. And I'm going to try to share that without getting all like technical. And also, I do wanna say this. So sometimes when you start talking about essential oils, it gets kind of woo woo because some of the essential oil books claim that essential oils cure everything from COVID to cancer. And you have to use essential oils responsibly and you need to do your own research and come up with a combination that makes sense for you that is safe for you and your family or whoever you are making a product for. So that out of the way, I'm gonna flip you around. Y'all should see my kitchen. It looks like kaboom, but that's the way it is when you make soap. So I'm gonna set my recipe here aside and we're gonna begin first here by making our lye preparation. So I have my gloves, I have on long sleeves, long pants, <clears throat> safety glasses, and we are going to take some distilled water and we're going to add 12.15 ounces. Now I know you've all seen measuring before and normally I would have just had this made, but I want to share that I'm going to do it a little bit differently than a lot of uh, the recipes you've seen prior. All right, so that's our 12.15. So I'm going to sit this in the sink. And now I'm going to measure out 4.35 ounces of lye. Now I have, I have a, a glob of lye that has developed in my lye. So I'm gonna to try to pour around that. So let's see if we can do that. So you do need a digital scale. I will put in the description box below my digital scale. I've been super pleased with it. As I've shared, I broke the door off 
it still works fine. And when it finally doesn't work fine, I will be purchasing the exact same scale. That's how much I like it. Okay, so what do you do if you go a little over? I have to get my special spoon. Oh dear, I know I can't have everything ready. You just dip a little out, put it back in the container. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on this and I'm gonna sit it aside. Now you've seen me talk before about adding a salt solution, a purchased salt solution, and it is sodium lactate 60%. So it's just salt solution, right? Well, today we're not gonna use that. Today we're gonna use something different. So if you are new to soap making or you don't want to purchase that additional item, in this recipe, we are going to add two tablespoons of sea salt into our lye and water mixture. And we're also gonna add another ingredient that I use in a lot of my soaps. So let me just say this is not a vegan soap. So this is Tussa Silk. You can buy silk from most soap making companies. You only need a tiny pinch. I have had this probably for five years and I barely used any out of it. Silk gives a really luscious um, feel to your soap on the skin. So I believe it does have benefits, especially to the face. So you just add a pinch to your lye water and the lye being so basic will actually dissolve the silk into your lye mixture. So over here, kind of out of camera view, I need a bigger counter guys, I really do. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and add about this much silk is how much I'm gonna use. I'm gonna add my two tablespoons of sea salt. And this is just fine sea salt. So don't use coarse just because it has a tendency to um, take a long time to dissolve. So let's add our two tablespoons of salt to start. And why you add salt, if I didn't say this, because I don't think I did, Salt makes for a harder bar of soap that is way easier to remove from the mold. So that's why I like adding the salt or salt solution. Okay, let me turn on my ceiling fan for ventilation. Again, don't stand right over it. And I know y'all can't see this very well. I'm just putting the lye into the liquid. Always remember snow on the mountain. Never put liquid into lye. I'm stirring, don't stand right over it. And we're having a big heat reaction and I'm gonna just take this silk and stretch it out a little bit so the lye can actually dissolve all of those fibers. Like yay. So just to show you, I don't know if y'all can see, can you see this? Oh yeah, you can see the steam rising. We are at 173 degrees. So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna start measuring out our oils. So we've spoken before, and I will leave the recipe in the description box below. We've spoken before about different oils and their properties. So I'm not going to bore you with that. In fact, I'm gonna measure out my oils without showing you how to do that because y'all have seen me measure. And I will bring you back and talk to you about adding the um, charcoal, why I do it, and why I choose the essential oils that I do. So stay tuned, we'll be back in a moment. What I'm going to be putting in here is the following. 10 ounces of coconut oil, 10 ounces of lard, two ounces of avocado, eight ounces of oil, I'm sorry, olive oil, and two ounces of castor oil. So I'm gonna put all of this into my bowl here. I'm going to then put it in the microwave, heat it up so it's about equal temperature 
to our lye solution and the oils are well mixed and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about the charcoal and the essential oils. So stay tuned. All right, well we have all of our oils melted together and our oil and lye mixture are coming to temperature. Lye is still a little bit too hot and generally your lye is slower to cool than your oils for whatever reason, maybe because the oils go into a much larger bowl. So let me swing you down here and to our oils, just as they are while they're still good and hot, I'm at about 100 to 120 degrees. I am going to add one and a half tablespoons of body safe activated charcoal. So our oil mixture, as you see, is going to turn a delicious black color. So I'm sure, you know, if, as you've been out shopping mainstream, you've seen all the charcoal preparations. There's actually even charcoal toothpaste that whitens the teeth. So charcoal is now being recognized as a great additive to skincare products to help purify the skin to draw out unwanted or unnecessary oils and toxins that clog our pores and dull the skin. There are actually two kinds of charcoal that you could consider using. One is regular charcoal, like we think of charcoal. The other is coconut charcoal, made from the charcoal of burning coconut holes. I have used coconut charcoal. It's lighter in color, so it produces a more grayish color. So what I can tell you is it's very highly textured. And for me, it was a complete irritant to my skin. It was too harsh. So just bear that in mind as you choose what charcoal you want to use. This soup, soup, well, it looks like soup. It looks like black soup. This soap is going to be silky smooth very soothing to the skin, yet purifying those pores, very moisturizing. And in just a moment, I'm gonna review with you the essential oils. Another note about charcoal. <laughs> so thankfully I pre-measured this because I opened the bag and it went floof everywhere. So I was charcoal, my floor was charcoal. Uh, I would suggest you do it outdoors if you can, because when you open that bag, it never fails. It goes everywhere. Um, I don't know why they don't put it in a jar that you could measure it a little easier. So let me just wash the charcoal off my hands here, and we'll talk a little bit about our essential oils. So I am wearing an older apron <laughs> from my beloved dad that says over 40 and still cooking. So um, bless his heart, I guess he thought I needed it. And um, as much as I hate getting it stained, I've probably had this for 20 years. So I am going to use it today in memory of my daddy. Alrighty, so we've just got our oil set aside and let's talk about our essential oil mixture that I have made up. So let me read you the quantities. And on any digital scale, you should have the option to toggle between ounces, uh, pounds, and grams. These essential oils are measured in grams. And here is what I'm using. Again, do your own research. Make sure you feel this is safe. 20 grams of lavender essential oil, 15 grams tea tree, 15 of peppermint, 10 of rosemary. So what does it smell like? It's a, it's not really medicinal. It's definitely not unpleasant. You can smell the mint and tea tree together. So it produces a bit of a menthol smell, not a menthol fill on the skin that I will share with you. You do want to be very careful guys. A lot of people are gonna say, oh, I'm gonna put more peppermint because I want that tingly feeling. You can really burn your skin by using too much true peppermint essential oil. So please be careful with that. So, you know, I always have a book. So let me share with you 
my go-to book, and I'll put a link to my Amazon affiliate store uh, to this book if it's still available. I'm not sure. It's called The Essential Oil Makers Handbook. So at one point in time, when I was early on in soaping for a business, I thought, I'll distill my own essential oils. That's going to just save me so much money. Well, let me tell you guys, it takes pounds and pounds and pounds of raw material to distill and extract that pure essential oil and not make a hydrosol, which is water and oil. So that all has to be siphoned off. So needless to say, my foray into creating <laughs> my own essential oils was very short-lived. Um, I did do some pine essential oil and it came out great, but I literally had volumes and volumes and volumes of pine and got like two milliliters of pine <laughs> essential oil. So if you're wondering, well, why are essential oils so pricey? That's why it takes a lot of raw material there's optimum time to harvest the crops that the oils are coming from. So you can't just go harvest the whole crop whenever you feel like it. Lavender, for example, needs to be, the flower needs to be on the wilt side. So it's bloomed, now it's wilting to extract the maximum oil. So there's a lot of science behind it. I'm sure you've all seen it. I've seen it. You go to the Dollar Tree, they have like a one ounce essential oil for a buck. Um, you really think it's essential oil, guys? Probably not. It, it may be a hydrosol, so it may contain a lot of water. It may not be essential oil at all. It may be a fragrance oil. So I would encourage you to just know the company that you're buying from and ensure that it is truly pure and safe to use on the skin and it's the appropriate concentration. So anyway, back to what I put in. So sorry guys let me just read to you why i chose the oils i chose so we're going to start with lavender now i told you this is a little bit woo woo according to the book lavender lowers blood pressure alleviates skin ailments so that's why i chose it calming we know that very relaxing pain killing invigorating antiseptic so kills unwanted germs on the face anti-inflammatory so how many of you get you know inflamed around your nose or even from rubbing your eyes helps with that and of course my personal favorite hastens childbirth so <laughs> do your own research okay the second oil is peppermint and let me share that peppermint is considered an antiseptic, so it helps cleanse the face, remove unwanted bacteria overload, and helps with headaches as well as respiratory and digestive issues. So think about how when you eat a peppermint, how your nose clears out, has that effect as well. A less known essential oil is rosemary. So this is um, a floral, and it improves circulation, calms the nerves, raises blood pressure. So if, if the lavender brought it down, the rosemary is going to bring it back up, reduces fatigue, stimulates the brain, alleviates respiratory issues. And why I chose it, it invigorates skin and hair growth. So if we're producing healthy new skin cells and it's turning over, we're not getting that buildup of dead dull skin that can make your skin look thick, unhealthy, and lifeless. Okay, the final. Uh, hang on. What am I missing here, guys? Help me out. Tea tree. Tea tree is an antiseptic. So tea tree does definitely have that mothball menthol smell. Um, it's used in a small amount in this and mixed with the other essential oils is quite pleasant in my opinion. One of the things I did want to share with you is when you get a reliable book on essential oils, it will list many areas in the book what preparation you're making and some of the things that you might use and why. 
So if you want to be your own law chemist, um, I think having a very reliable source like this is super important. So again, I'll try to find a link for you, put it in the description box. But this is definitely my go-to when I'm creating something new. All right, let me check the temperatures. If they've come together, we will mix them together. I will stick blend it and then we'll pour. So hang so before tight. we pour, I, uh, I've lost my glasses. Well, we'll just be really careful. I wanted to show you that all of that silk has dissolved in our lye water and salt solution. So let me get my glasses on. Alrighty, so I am going to blend these together. Y'all have seen stick blending before until it starts to come to trace. So it coats the stick blender. And when I dribble soap on the top, it leaves little dots. I pour soap very thin. And what I'm going to pour it in today are little molds. So when I do a facial soap, I don't do a regular bar soap. I make it look different so that, I don't know, it's special for the face. So I have a couple molds that are flowers. One of my personal favorite, Little Owls. So you want something that's comfortable in the hand for washing the face. So stay tuned and we'll be pouring in just a moment. Okay, so we have a nice big bowl of black soap. And as you can imagine, all I'm going to do is just pour it into the molds like so. One thing to notice about or note about charcoal soap, it does develop soap ash, so it will get that white haze. I'm not sure if it's from the charcoal, if it's from the combination of essential oils, but I always have pretty heavy coating. As soon as you use the soap, and it's not harmful in any way, it's just simply part of the soap, it will come off and will not return. So it's a temporary condition. So yes, we're gonna have some lovely black flowers. <laughs> Last year, I actually got some beautiful black wave petunias. They looked like black velvet. They were so gorgeous. And I bought them from one of our local uh, lawn and garden centers, um, a mom and pops type place. And they just have such unique items. So I will be purchasing that again this year. All right, so. One more mold full here. So I can give you an idea of how many bars this is gonna make. And these bars will range uh, a little under, it kind of depends on the mold, but um, a, a little under four ounces. So they're not your typical bath size bar. Try not to slop this everywhere because believe me, this charcoal is not easy to clean up. Okay, so we're just about there. I like to get every drop out that I possibly can. One thing, it's easier on cleanup. And secondly, you can't use what you leave in the bowl and wash down the drain. So it does smell fragrant in here. I tell you, that's one of the joys of being a soap maker is all of the different smells you create in your home. All right, let me grab this little dab that I got on the counter. Okay, so I am going to let these set up just a little bit before I make the treacherous trek to the soap room. I will be spraying the tops with 91% rubbing alcohol and that helps isopropyl alcohol, helps to decrease the amount of soap ash you will get or soda ash. One of the advantages to using a mold is the face of your soap will be against the mold. So you're gonna get more of the white on the back of the soap. If it's troublesome to you, you don't like the looks of it, you can steam it right off. So if you have a good steam iron or one of those steam things like you clean around the edges of your sink and grout with that takes it right off. So I'm going to straighten up here 
before I have a disaster spill or something inadvertent happens. And then I want to bring you back for a few channel announcements, so stay tuned. Well, I'm happy to say the charcoal soap made a safe journey into the soaping room, so I thought I would bring you in here. I wanted to share with you what a bar of charcoal soap looks like when it does develop a little bit of the soap ash. So you can see that it has sort of a white-ish haze. I choose not to remove that nine times out of 10, unless I'm making a multicolor soap that it destroys the look of the design. I leave it on because it does come off the very first time you get it wet and wash with it. I use this soap actually about three times a week. I do not use it daily. I use a very mild goat's milk soap that I have created for my face. Works well. Some of you may be like, oh, don't use soap on your face. Um, actually, the right soap is good to use on your face. So I will have these for sale. Some of you have asked, and I apologize guys, I got so far behind with producing for the subscription box that I have not had a lot of stock. Right now, I am curing two big batches of soap that will be for sale. Now three, so we'll have charcoal facial soap. So um, I am sharing the recipe for those of you who wanna give it a try. This one's easy because it doesn't require multiple colors and containers and processes. So I think it's a very easy soap recipe, but I think you're gonna be amazed with the results. Part two of this video, which will be up next week, I'm going to share with you a Argon rose oil that I've been making and using for my skin that I've been super pleased with. So I'm gonna share a little secret with you. Also, well, two things. Coming up on the, on the channel, I've already told you some of the things we'll be doing. My son, bless his sweetheart, sent me seeds just because he sent me seeds and a birthday present. And my birthday is not for a few more days. So bless his heart. But we have um, Baker Creek heirloom seeds, which are my favorite. Cosmic Eclipse tomatoes, Brad's atomic grape tomatoes, sage because we eat a lot of sage in this family, lemon basil, and then he got a free package of dill. So I have actually ordered myself a plant light. This will be my first year of having a grow light, if you will, for my seedlings. So I'm hoping that will produce stronger seedlings that are not so tall and leggy that will produce earlier in my garden. So we'll be starting that very soon. Even though it's only March, I can't wait much longer. <laughs> Also, if you're part of the Wellness Homesteader group over on Facebook, I want to announce that we now have a new admin. Many of you probably know her, have seen her interacting um, in the group and on the videos, and that's Sharon. And I call her Sis because we've decided that we have so much in common, plus we're both blondes, that we probably are sisters. So. Um, delightful, amazing lady, a uh, homesteader with lots of gifts and talents, really good at engaging conversation. So, you know, guys go out and take a look at her posts. She has so many fun things that we can interact with and um, really make the group more robust and a little bit more fun to be in. I have not been as diligent as I should be about posting. Um, I'm busy. <laughs> so it's really nice to have her helping me as well. So if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave me a comment below. Would you use black soap on your face? What do you think of the skin benefits that the essential oils might bring to you? And if so, are you willing to try it? Are you going to make it yourself? So I'd love to hear your comments. If you found my channel somehow by searching for soap or charcoal soap, and you're not a, a part of our YouTube family, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know, the one I think that's down there. And then click the bell to be reminded of all the new videos. I generally have videos three times a week. And we do a variety of things here, not just soap making. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed. And I will see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Take care.